It has become the slogan of magic, the cornerstone of hermetic philosophy, and the total brand of the coolest synthetic deity, meaning Baphomet. It is as above, so below. In this video, you're going to learn the deeper meaning of this hermetic catchphrase and how it might share as the center focal point for all mystical philosophy. These words were attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, a legendary Hellenistic figure and sage who brought us the Corpus Hermeticum. The Corpus Hermeticum is a, uh, a set of writings, a set of books that pretty much were like the OG Law of Attraction Manifestation man Manual, but like a couple thousand years ago. The text that bears these words is called the Emerald Tablet. Though the tablet itself has not been found, uh, academics have traced the source to other Arabic writers uh, in around the 8th century or so, which uniquely connect this to alchemy. It is my belief that these writings of Hermes Trismegistus was probably written pseudopigraphically, meaning ghost-written, by a group of mystics or a mystery school, maybe a few hundred years BC. But this doesn't devalue the work. As with all mysticism, we're not looking for necessarily historical accuracy, we're looking for the experience that it is trying to get across. The Emerald Tablet is short as it is, but I'm going to just read you the beginning that includes our famous slogan. Here's a translation by Blavatsky. What is below is like that which is above, and what is above is similar to that which is below to accomplish the wonders of the one thing. As all things were produced by the meditation of one being, so all things were produced from this one by adaption. Remember this idea of the one, it's going to recur quite a lot. So to shorten it, we say as above, so below. The general idea of as above, so below is that whatever's happening in the larger scale of things, with the source, Brahman, God, the ultimate ground of being, whatever's happening there correlates to what's happening in the smaller scale of existence. Planets, people, atoms, us, you, me, this video, this very moment. Now, a literal interpretation of this would be something like juxtaposing atoms to solar systems and drawing connections there, but a slightly less literal and more traditional interpretation of this would be astrology, drawing correlations between the stars and what's happening on this earth terrestrially. Now, that's a pretty good guess as to what these early mystics were up to and thinking about because some of the earliest hermetic texts are astrological, but it doesn't end there. It takes quite a psychological turn and then a really fun ontological turn. So check this out. On the psychological scale, as above, so below implies what we all know colloquially as law of attraction, manifestation, what you can hold in your mind, you can hold in your hand. In this sense, the above is the abstract notion, intention, uh, words, image, dream, desire that we have in our mind. And from that, we create this abstract thought form and with enough attention and effort on that thought form, it eventually concretizes itself in the material world outside of our mind, that being the below. This in tarot is represented by the suit of swords and the suit of discs. This is the relationship between mind and matter. But it doesn't stop there. See, beyond psychology, as above, so below has metaphysical implications as well. And this is when we look outside the mere human experience. Now, there isn't really anything outside the human experience, and before you get crazy in the comments, I will explain this towards the end of the video. But for right now, let's just pretend. Zooming outside of the myopic human condition, we look at questions of how did the cosmos come to be? What is existence? To help us look at as above, so below in this context, I'd like to bring our attention to a friend, Plato. Now, Plato, you might've heard of him. He kind of did a couple things and may or may not have contributed to all of Western thought. And so I don't know how I'm gonna simplify all of his work in just 30 seconds, but he pretty much proposed that for everything in the universe, there is a more perfect, ideal version of that in an almost abstract place called the world of forms. So this YouTube video, for example, there is somewhere in the world, in the, or not in the world, a perfect YouTube video that has 
emanated into this YouTube video. And this YouTube video, though far from perfect, is representing that perfect YouTube video. This idea is very important because Plato influenced a lot of things in his time, but he was also no stranger to these early hermetic hot takes that were traveling around. To be honest, I don't know who came first and who influenced what, but I do know that the main principle has survived for thousands of years. And the general idea is that there is an ideal that becomes an actual, and then an actual that can realize itself in an ideal. The above and the below. Even before Plato, we see this idea secretly mapped out in the Tetractus, an esoteric and sacred symbol of Pythagoras. Later on, we see this idea mapped out in the Tree of Life by the Kabbalists, and even later by the Tarot. And now I'm gonna switch things up and tell you what's really going on. The mystical and true interpretation of as above, so below, has nothing to do with levels of consciousness, and it has nothing to do with height. When we look at Plato, when we study Kabbalah and a lot of Western esoteric influences, we kind of imagine a world where the divine is above and the manifest world is below, right? Like the phrase. It's kind of like this elevator that can bring us to this pure penthouse of Purusha, of Source and God, and bring us all the way down to the parking deck of Prakriti, the lower floor of gross materialization. But the truth is, there's only one floor, and it's the ground floor, and it is the ultimate ground of being, to quote some past mystics. The above isn't this otherworldly heaven, unless of course you're talking about the kingdom that is within you. I feel like somebody said that once. The above is within you. It is the very center. It is pure, undifferentiated awareness the same pure awareness that everyone has right now. It is the same awareness that you are using to experience this YouTube video. This infinite awareness is the subject and it is the above, whereas the below is everything that it is aware of. You, me, SpongeBob, this YouTube video, everything. But the above and the below are inextricably linked. They are mutually arising. And this is one of the biggest secrets in all of this stuff. You see, the, the above needs the below because the below gives the above something to be aware of, to flex its awareness. But the below needs the above because without the above, there would be no awareness to experience the below. Without the above, you wouldn't be experiencing this video. But without this video in this exact moment right now, there would be nothing for your awareness. Well, there would. I mean, you could turn around and do like literally any other thing. And I'm so happy that you're here and watching this. But the idea is if this were to not exist in this moment, if it would just to erase, your awareness would have nothing to behold. This is one of the main theses of the Upanishads. Atman is Brahman. I'm going to put a footnote there for another video. So the below is an expression of the above through diversity, through multiplication, through separation, and through all these different forms and things. The above is the one true thing experiencing all these things below. So to reorient the metaphor a little bit, the below is every separate thing, including you, me, and this video, and everything. But the above is the one experiencer of all of it, which we all share. Everything in mysticism, and subsequently most religion, is trying to map out a bridge between the below and the above. The below being expressible but finite, the object of experience. The above being inexpressible, infinite, the subject experiencing. So if there's a certain spiritual teaching or esoteric idea that doesn't quite make sense, it's because it doesn't make sense. Instead, 
it is pointing to the subject experiencing sense and logic and sensation. Because the above is the capacity for all those things, but is not those things. And I found that the most beautiful words of mystics of the past that really just get me out of this world and into, well, into the world, they give the context to help you invite this pure awareness, which isn't looking for necessarily the answer or the logic or the sense around it, but is all of it experiencing those things and the capacity for those things. To go further with this mystical interpretation of our hermetic catchphrase, I would suggest that the two above and below are mutually arising. They're like a chicken and the egg, except neither one came first. As I said, above exists because there's something below to be aware of, and below exists because there's something above to be aware of it. I kind of look at it like that Spotify sigil that says you're running a playlist or something. But I want to talk about another secret, and this is goes even beyond the pure awareness. When the pure awareness and the object of its awareness cancel each other out, then there is literally nothing that could exist. And this is very important. This is the no-thingness, the void, the sunyata of Zen, the Ein Sof of Kabbalah. This is even more indescribable because it literally doesn't exist. But the canceling out of subject and object is what is called the hermetic marriage. It is also what is called in the East as samadhi. It is the complete destruction of object and subject, merging into one and ultimately none. And it is truly indescribable. This is the annihilation of the lover beholding the beloved. And out of that dance, the annihilation of that union itself is another form of nothingness. It is a kind of death, but the exit from that union, the exit from nothing, back into the dance of subject and object, above and below, that in itself is another sort of death. We might even call it incarnation. And this is what I meant before when I said there's nothing outside the human experience because in a way there is no human experience outside of anything else. But I'll leave you with this. In any given moment you can find the fullness of the above in the finite particulars of the below because it is always the above that is looking and it is always the below that is providing vision. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this fun, please share with friends, family, and definitely that eccentric coworker. Let me know your thoughts. You can find more material at tarotmysticismacademy.com. Much love. I will see you in the next wormhole.